time, there have been men to whom justice has been more important than life itself. From these ranks come four men, prepared to fight valiantly on the side of justice, wherever the need may be. Joined together in this cause, they are the Four Just Men. His office told me he was here. Sure, lady. He's right over there. Thank you. Good afternoon. I I'm sorry. I'm a total stranger to you. I, I sit down at your table. All I can think of to say is good afternoon. I suppose we relax and see if we can iron it out. Thank you, Mr. Ryder. I do hope you can help me. It's like a nightmare. Now, just as a start, who are you and where are you from? Sue Pearson from Fairview. It's a small town upstate. How did you know my name? Actually, I know an awful lot about you. I heard about you two years ago when I decided to study law. I went for advice to Mr. Chisholm. He's my father's lawyer. He said if I had a brain in my head, I'd come to university here and study under you. I might learn to like Mr. Chisholm. Well, since then, well, since then I've read a lot about you, about your helping people, and I spent a lot of time in the library reading your briefs. You seem a little young to enter college. Well, I wasn't due to graduate from Fairview High till next spring. Then I was going on to college the following year. You don't think you'll graduate? I know I won't. Well, then I can't help, Sue. I can't get you into law school unless you meet the requirements. Well, it's not that. My grades are fine. I've been on the honor roll every month. Well, then, what is it, Sue? The school's banned me. They won't let me attend classes. It all started with the accident in my father's lab. He's an atomic research scientist. It's been awful. More than I... Sue, if I ask you a direct question, will you give me a direct answer? What reason does the school give for barring you? They think... They think I'm radioactive. Come on, Sue, I'm taking you home. How far is the hospital? It's about a mile. You want to see my father first? Yes, I'd like to get a first-hand report on exactly what happened. Hospital patient, you look pretty healthy, Mr. Pearson. I feel fine. They just want to keep taking more tests. It's ridiculous. I guess it's a polite way of uh, keeping me locked up. Uh, I'd like you to describe the circumstances of the accident. Yeah, sure. It was a day in the lab. Just an ordinary day, just like any other day. Say, George, how about that new batch of radioactive isotopes? Uh, it's all set up in the hot cell, ready for transfer to the vault. Right. You watch everything in here, eh?
Stay put, George. I've got to go in. One of the capsules broke. Ray, you're crazy. You can't expose yourself to that much radiation. If it spreads, we're in trouble. I'll be out of there in no time. in a minute. I got all the stuff back in the vault. I'm going to get rid of these clothes and take a shower. Come on, George. I'm closing down for a few days. What for? Routine. Get the decontamination group in here. Precaution. You think any of those radioactive particles got out? Not enough to do any harm. Why take chances? Let's play safe. Suits me. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to get some of that fishing in after all. Better get a medical checkup first. I'll do the same. And then I went home. Oh, would you get that, please? Hello? Jarvis, just leave now, please. Uh, yes, of course. We have to leave. One question before we go. In your opinion, as a scientist, how serious a dose of radiation did you receive? Well, I think I was well below the danger zone. I, I don't think I was harmed. But there's one thing I am sure of. Any idea that I or, or any member of my family could contaminate anybody else is scientifically ridiculous. Thanks, I'll take it. You're kind of late this morning, aren't That's you? It's a bad day, ma'am. Just a minute. You're not delivering to the Pearsons, are you? Well, yeah. Two great A and a pint of whipping cream. Don't you know what's happened? Yeah, but I don't have to go in the house, and I don't see any harm in delivering the milk. The bottles get returned, don't they? And then they're sent out again. Do you want to go spreading atoms all over town? Look, lady, the way I heard it in school was they have atoms all over town anyway. Now, you know what I mean. Radioactive ones. If you deliver to the Pearsons, I'm through doing business with you. And that'll go for half the housewives in town, once I get through talking at the women's club. All right, Mrs. Willett, just as you say. Well, the milkman's passed us by. The grocer told me to stay out of the store. Sue can't go to school. And old friends hurry past me, afraid to look me in the eye. Don't worry, Mother. We'll get food somewhere. And Mr. Wright is here to help us. How did this panic get rolling so quickly? Well, it all started about an hour or so after the accident. When my husband came home from work, the woman next door was here. Ray said he'd been exposed to radiation, and he called the doctor for a checkup. Well, Norma, my friend, my neighbor, rushed out of here as though the house were on fire. You can bet she had the busiest phone in town for the rest of the day. into the house. Geiger counters. We've got some in science class. They're probably going to check the house for radiation. I knew it. I knew it all the time. 
Now, Carl, you go over there, make sure no one sees you, and find out what's going on. And don't you dare touch anything, you hear? Oh, Mom, please, I go study with Sue. She's my girl. You know what your father said? He said if I saw her anymore, he'd send me away to military school. He didn't say I had to spy on her. Then I'll find out for myself what's going on. Somebody has to look after the family welfare. Hmm. It's a simple enough process, Mrs. Pearson. We just check the house for radioactivity and then decontaminate if necessary. Well, did my husband send you? No, I think the orders came from the mayor, the sheriff, the rest of the board. Can he do this? Is it legal? Well, they could get a warrant and make it legal. But now that they're here, why don't you let them check? The harm's already been done. Harm? Why, when we leave here, the house will be safe to live in again. What's harmful about that? This town's got the jitters. And when you drive up with all that fancy equipment, it's only gonna make them more jittery. There's danger to this household, all right. But it isn't from radioactivity. Well, we're only doing our job. We're trying to well, do it. Well, then do it. Hmm. Hot spot here. Better get rid of these. Yeah, in the box. Hate to do this, Mrs. Pearson, but this has to go back to the lab for testing. Bessie, get me Mrs. Dolan and buzz my party line. And you stay on. It's about the Pearsons. Mom, be careful what you say. You don't understand about these things. You keep out of this. The atomic people arrived at the Pearsons with a whole truckload of scientific instruments. They're testing every inch of the house. Yes, and you know what? That place is contaminated. Why, they're ripping open the furniture and cutting up the carpets and throwing everything into a lead box. Clothes, everything. If you ask me, we've got to do something, and fast. How bad is it? Well, so far, we found very little. Just a few particles of radioactive dust. Too minute to contaminate anybody, but I'm afraid we've got to remove them. It's part of the job. You think Mr. Pearson tracked them in with the shoes? Could be. Oh, poor race chair. I know how you feel, ma'am. I guess we're not doing the interior decorating any good, but believe me, you're lucky. The amount of particles here is negligible. Is that what your report will say? Yep. Will it be official? You bet. That's all I wanted to know. This time I had a talk with your sheriff. I came to give you an advance report on the test you ordered at the Pearsons. I didn't order it. It was voted by the town authorities. Which way did you vote? Mister, I heard you came to help the Pearsons. Now, the best way you can help them is to tell them to pack up and leave. You mean go back where they came from? Yep, that's right. Well, actually, they came from here. <laughs> it's nice of you to remember that. All I know is, as long as they stay in this town, I can't be responsible for their safety or yours. That's the second hint I've had to get out of town. The manager at the hotel suddenly found he didn't have a room. I'll be moving in with the Pearsons. Moving into that house? You were a bigger fool than I thought. Well, that house is safe, Sheriff. Your own test proved it. Those instruments don't mean a thing to me. I believe in facts I can understand. You voted for the test. Duh. I assume you mean you only believe in those instruments that prove what you want proven. I got all the proof I want today. George Rudley, Pearson's assistant, was found dead at his house. Did the doctor establish the cause of death? Oh, he said heart failure, but it's a cinch Rudley died from radiation. He was right there at the lab when the accident happened. Looks like you don't believe in medical opinions either. Not in this case, mister. Neither does the town. Everybody here is afraid they're gonna die from radioactive poison. There's no more room for the Pearsons in Fairview, or you for that matter. Your job's to keep law and order, Sheriff. And that includes protecting the Pearsons. Is that so? Well, mister, there's something you ought to know about a small town like this. When something starts scaring folks, scaring them good, they split in half. Half holds meetings, half starts acting. When the two halves get together, it's like a button's been pushed. There's an explosion. And when that happens, where'll you be? First in line to push the panic button? Oh, good morning. Breakfast in a few minutes. I'm afraid there isn't much in the house. 
I'll get the groceries today, if I have to go to the next town to get them. There's a transatlantic call on here. I guess it's for you. Yes? Oh, yes, just a moment. He's here. Thank you. Hello? Tim. What are you doing in a town called Fairview? I never heard of the place myself. Oh, I see. Yeah, go on. Tim, I need help in fast. There's one specific thing I'd like you to do. Something that happened in your territory concerning radioactivity and a family named Aubert. I needed to bring these people to their senses. Some proof they can look at, not just listen to. I get the message, Jeff. I can start on it right away. Well, thanks, Tim. And call me back as soon as you can. Fairview, three, two, four. There isn't much time. Right. Good morning, Sue. Where are your books, your school books? I don't want to go. I just don't want to make an issue out of it. Sue, I want to make an issue of it. Denying you schooling is a violation of your constitutional rights. And I want first-hand evidence of when, why, and how those rights were violated. And I'm going with you. Miss Pearson. This is Mr. Jeff Ryder, Mr. Water. Oh. How do you do, Mr. Water? May I ask you a question? Why, yes. You're the principal of this school and about to start a senior class seminar, which is part of Miss Pearson's curriculum. Yes, but a situation has arisen, Mr. Ryder. Is there any reason why she can't attend? I don't wish to stop her. I do wish to protect her. Young people can be so cruel. Well, then she can attend, under my protection. Did you ring this bell? Yeah. It's an emergency bell, isn't it? And my old man said that girl, she's an emergency. And I gotta ring this bell any time she comes to this school. Dad! I see they sprung you. Yeah, about an hour ago. Help me put this food away, will you, Sue? I think your father wants to have a word with Mr. Ryder. Sure, Mom. Family doctor drove me home. I've known him all my life. He's not a bad chap. He studied all the reports. There's nothing wrong with me or the house. Oh, will he make a public statement? Well, he begged of me not to ask him for that. Oh, well, this is Judy, isn't it? Well, I figured he's a pretty old man. He's pretty tired, and... He doesn't think he could start a new career. And you gave him your blessing? Oh, I had to let him off the hook. He, he told me a couple of other revelations, too. Apparently, tomorrow there's going to be a town meeting, but he figures it's going to be more like a mob than a meeting. And the other thing? Well, apparently, until today, he'd been under pressure to keep me in the hospital. And all of a sudden, today, uh, the pressure turned the other way. Mm. It's as though they were writing you off. Well, I figure if they're going to whip themselves up and railroad me out of town, they don't want to start the festivities at their fancy new hospital. Well, Ray, if that's the way you think, maybe we ought to go. Honey, this is where we live, and this is where we're going to stay. Hello? Yes? Oh, uh, it's Paris for you. Hello? Yes, yeah, speaking. Yeah, put Mr. Collier on, please. Hello, Tim. Got enough dope for you to go before the Atomic Energy Commission. I think I've found just what you want. Good boy. Now, when did they leave? Right. Right, I'll meet them. Now, here's some information on what one of the scientists calls everyday normal radiation. Yeah, okay, now, hold it a second. Yeah, go ahead, Tim. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Well, thanks, Tim. That was fast service. Yeah, I'll let you know. Bye. We've got enough evidence to put ignorance on trial. And with it, this town. They've got a big surprise coming. You mind if I borrow your car? I'll be back tomorrow.
Get away from that window. I'm going out there. You're staying right here. All of you. I'll kill him. He'll kill you first. Guy. Shut up, let's hear what he's got to say. Well, I ain't seen the guy before. Ladies and gentlemen. How do you think you can cope with the age of modern science and react like savages to a few rumors, a few lies? Who said it's a lie? They had to decontaminate the place, didn't they? That's right. Yes, that's right. Do you know how much radioactivity they found in this house? Less than hits you every day. From the sun, from the water you drink, from the air you breathe. Three days ago, this was a peaceful town. And you were law-abiding citizens. Do you know what changed you? Fear. Fear and ignorance, which can turn decent people into savages. Nothing can happen to you because of Ray Pearson. And nothing will happen to Ray Pearson. Not from what took place in his lab. How do we know that? Pearson's contaminated, and so are you! We've got plenty to be afraid of. You think we want to die? You're not gonna die. Do you want proof? Well, I brought it to you. Proof that fear and fear alone have turned you into a howling mob. So he's found somebody else. Are you going to shut up or do I have to talk to you? So who is this guy? Shut up. This is Jean Aubert. He's just come all the way from France, especially to be here. He's a scientist like Ray Pearson. Eight years ago, he had a similar accident. Only he was exposed to four times as much radiation as Ray Pearson. And here he is, alive and healthy. What about his family? What about them? Yeah, what about them? Yeah. This is his wife. She's as healthy as any of you. Since the accident, they've had two children. This is Colette, the youngest. Her brother isn't here because, like all kids of seven, they have to be in school. You see? My baby, she is all right, just as we are. Yes. Yes, I see. What more proof do you want? Because I've got it. Go home, friends. Go home. Call me? Sure, Carl. If you can wait a minute. Hello, Sue.